A million bucks isn't what a million bucks used to be anymore. It's a sad reality. It's a cliche because it's actually true. For instance, just 10 years ago, if you spent a million Philippine pesos on a product today, you'd have to spend over 1.3 million Philippine pesos. Even worse, at the turn of the millennia, that same 1 million Philippine pesos, you'd have to spend over 2 million Philippine pesos. Now, that kind of information is available on the internet and it's plastered all over the place. But what it doesn't show is that a million Philippine pesos 10, 20 years ago is still a million Philippine pesos to you and me. Now, manufacturers understand this point, and they understand both points actually, which is to say that they understand the value of our money and at the same time inflation rates. But there are very few that actually have the ability not to cross that line. So when they can come out with products that are around the 1 million Philippine peso mark, that's already a damn great thing. But to come out with options, with substance, that, my friends, is the ticket. Case in point are these prime examples today, which is the Suzuki XL7, the MG ZS or ZS, and the Nissan Almera, all around the 1 million Philippine peso mark and all available on autodeal.com.ph. Now, I've said it many times before that there is no one perfect car for everybody. So today, let's figure out which one of these options best suits your lifestyle. Hey, we got a sponsor. And now, a quick word from our sponsors. Look, car insurance may not be the sexiest thing out there, but with over 120,000 accidents in a year, and that's when my mom isn't on the road, car insurance is a must. I mean, think about it. Floods, earthquakes, volcanoes, camotes, drunk elephants, people asking, where's the beef? Where's the beef? You know, that's probably before your time. I've got a teenager who's about to get his license. Insurance? Oh, Hell yes! Malayan Automaster Comprehensive Insurance has got you covered with their fully loaded insurance, which comes with all the insurance products you need. From third-party liability to injury and property damage, riots, strikes, civil commotion, and many more including theft and acts of nature. It's even got 24-hour roadside assistance in the event you need a tow, minor roadside repair, or even if your car ends up in the drink. Oh, heaven forbid. Malayan Automaster has quite literally got you so covered with their fully loaded insurance, they'll even reimburse your alternative transportation while your car is being fixed, like Grab or Angkas. I mean, seriously, sangkapa. Hop on over to the Malayan website or auto deal insurance by clicking on the links below in the description. Do you have any idea what insurance costs in the Ferrari mother? Uh, still a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a new one, that's for sure. Now, while this is essentially a three-car comparo, they're not exactly jostling with one another, but they do have an allure to three different lifestyles at roughly the same price point. You've got a sedan, you've got a crossover, and of course, an MPV. Let's break it down into three simple categories. Different segments they are, but we'll give them a go on overall look, then more importantly on cargo space, and at the top of the list, passenger comfort. The latest of the three is the Almera. Now, the top of the line N Sport comes in at 1,098,000 Philippine pesos, but this non N Sport VECVT comes in at 100,000 Philippine pesos more affordable. Apart from the bits and bobs that you see that dress it up, mechanically, it's exactly the same as the top of the line. The overall look of the new Almera brings it up to speed with the rest of Nissan's lineup. It's both aggressive, and elegant in a way, the headlights are LED with DRLs, making for a sharp appearance at night. The rear is slightly squared compared to the smooth lights up front, with four carbon fiber and silver accents found at the bottom that mimic the front. Powering the Almera is a one liter three cylinder turbo mated to a CVT, which produces 99 horses at 152 Nm meters of torque. Inside the city, Expect about 14 kilometers per liter, 18 when that clears up, and then it's a ridiculously impressive 21 kilometers per liter on the highway. It's got a very mature look to it without giving off a boomer vibe, if you understand what I'm going at. It's handsome, and truth be told, it's actually well built. Overall appearance, I'd give it a solid four out of five. In truth, I'd actually give it a 10 because it makes me look so tall. Look at it, it's small, right? Now, when you get to the back and you open her up, you are looking at a massive 474 liters of space. I say massive because, well, the car is only 14 and a half feet long and only five and a half feet wide. That's a lot of space. Unfortunately, however, it doesn't increase because the rear seats don't fold. But in the context of subcompact sedans, 474 liters is a lot, which is why I'm giving this car, for cargo space at the very least, a solid four out of five.
The second row provides relatively good comfort for two passengers and charging points at the back help keep the cabin comfortable, wherein ingress and egress is actually relatively easy, even in a car that sits only 135 millimeters above the road. The tech up front, well, you can start with the 8-inch Nissan Connect infotainment system, which is married to six speakers, with a pretty above average sound, mind you, and a 7-inch instrument cluster display and buttons on your steering wheel. The Almera's Nissan Intelligent Mobility, yeah, that features include autonomous emergency braking, forward collision warning, around view monitor, and hill start assist. The subcompact sedan, by default, is like your go-to automobile. It's low to the ground, with space best for four inside the city, it's the perfect runabout with unmatched stability. Compact and easy to maneuver, with a responsive ride at up to medium speed inside the city. Better on the highway, obviously, for trips an hour or two away without draining the rear passengers or the driver too much. It meets your expectations, which is why on passenger comfort, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. If you have a bigger budget but still want a sedan, then you might want to consider the Honda City. A review can be found at the link at the upper right hand of your screen, or the Mazda 3 if you want to dish out more cash as alternatives to the Nissan Almera. Impossible to miss the similarities to a Mazda CX-5, the MG ZS is, well, it's a good looking automobile. Not to be confused with the MG ZS-T, and unlike the CX-5, or the T for that matter, it falls perfectly into our budget at 998,000 Philippine pesos. It has a sporty front clip with aggressive halogen headlamps, a wide mesh grille, and quite large fog lamps to aid the compact crossover's ground clearance of 147 millimeters. Powering the ZS is a 1.5-liter four-speed automatic that pushes out 114 horses and 150 newton meters of torque with a combined fuel efficiency of 11.8 kilometers per liter. It's not immediate, but the power is eventually sufficient to pull the crossover along. The tapering of the windows and the projection from the rear gives it a somewhat fastback look, adding to its sportiness, as do the 17s on the 50 series tires. It's very well shaped with a spoiler at the rear that flows towards the center. No power tailgate, but the rear emblem is your show-off piece. A familiar silhouette? Yes, good looking? Well, no doubt. Which is why it's easy to give the MG ZS a solid four out of five for its overall look. Now, when it comes to cargo space, you can max out the ZS to over 1,150 liters of space. That's if you fold the second row. And because you can have a very low lip thanks to an adjustable bottom, you can load much taller items as well. But at a full complement of four or five passengers, you're gonna need those seats. So their space is limited to 359 liters for a crossover. Not spectacular. So on cargo space alone, I'm gonna give the ZS a three out of five. The rear tunnel, not very tall at all, negligible really. Seats, comfortable leather, minimal bolstering to get in and out very easily. Space, I'd say two adults and a preteen, no problem. Toys, unfortunately, none. Very basic for the second row, unfortunately, but you do get a good share on that awesome panoramic roof, which would be of better use away from the concrete jungle. It's simple, neat, and functional. In the middle of your gauges, you've got a trip computer with loads of info, you've got a flat bottom steering wheel with trip and audio controls, and an eight inch infotainment system that has Apple CarPlay with six speakers and a reverse camera, just above the air controls. It's clean with enough accents to stand out and break any monotony you may come across. You've got better ground clearance and the ability to traverse roads that would otherwise endanger or compromise much lower vehicles, the crossover provides the ability to escape the city and complete, well, quote-unquote, roads that surround your favorite destinations. Slightly elevated with a unibody, the MG ZS gets a 4 out of 5 when it comes to passenger comfort. If crossovers are your thing and you have a bit more to spend, then have a think about the likes of the GD Coolray or even the Kia Seltos. Our review is but a link away on your screen as alternatives to the MG ZS. Now, we could have easily gone with the Ortiga, but we opted for something a bit more robust looking in an MPV. And it's newer too. While the Ortiga does fall underneath the 1 million Philippine peso mark, the XL7 is not that far ahead. The single variant comes in at 1 million and 98,000 Philippine pesos. The front end is very distinct in Suzuki's lineup of cars. Clean for the most part, 
the additional cladding on its sides doesn't give it an overly wide appearance, while the four skid plates in the front and rear don't take away from its relatively sleek appearance. It's powered by a 1.5-liter gasoline engine that produces 103 horses and 138 newton meters of torque, which is actually the same engine found in the Jimny, and it's paired with a four-speed traditional automatic. In terms of seven-seaters, the XL7 is actually one of the better-looking models in the segment, not just because it's more dressed up, but because the execution of the additions isn't over the top. Except maybe for the fake vents on its front fender, though. That's the only gripe I have with it. In a nutshell, the XL7 is basically a dressed-up Ortiga with extra parts and extra ground clearance too, 200 millimeters in total. It's not overly accessorized, which is great for some of the more conservative of us. So it's a darn good-looking automobile. Overall appearance, I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Definitely your choice of vehicle if space is your number one concern. At the back, with the third row in play, you're looking at 153 liters, which is, I admit, nothing spectacular. But that's for seven people. When you fold, or oh, I'm sorry, when you fold the third row, you are looking at 550 liters of space, which is great because you can maximize even the cubby holes found underneath. And then fold the second row and you're looking at over 800 liters of space. And the fact that it's got a flat lip and loading bulkier and heavier items into this thing shouldn't be a problem. And sometimes even better than much larger SUVs. That alone in my book for cargo space, I'm gonna give this car a five out of five. The third row of the XL7 is quite tight, but still good for small to medium kids. Headroom is manageable, and the middle row seats slide forward, granting you that much more space, which is more generous than the missing air vents, unfortunately. In the middle, you are greeted with heaps more legroom and headroom. There are a set of air vents, just blowers that get cold air from the front, but at least it's something. At the business end, you've got an impressive 10-inch touchscreen infotainment with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it doubles as your reverse camera and is complemented by rear parking sensors. Also standard are your dual analog gauges that flank the screen for your digital trip computer. There is also a flat bottom steering wheel that feels absolutely great. Cargo space is undeniable, and for a larger family moving about inside the city or short trips just outside, the XL7 does well to service your needs. If you position your passengers well, maximizing the seven seats is very much doable. I'd give its overall comfort an expected three out of five. With space at a premium for an MPV and your budget permits, then other worthy options are the Maxxis G50 or go with the quintessential MPV in the form of the Toyota Innova, which we reviewed recently. Link is on the top right as an alternative to the Suzuki XL7. If you spend most of your time inside the city, the sedan would definitely be the perfect automobile for you. It's light, it's compact, it's extremely fuel efficient, and it's got enough space if need be for four passengers. Trunk space is actually pretty darn good in such a small automobile, so it can definitely carry anything that you need when you're dealing with stuff just inside the city. And it's stable and low to the ground, which is great. But if you need something with a little bit more height, say you're a little bit more adventurous, uh, you head out of town, you head for the beach, and you need a little bit more ground clearance for that confidence to go over rough roads. I'm not saying off-road, no. I'm just saying rougher roads like when you're heading into the beach itself and you need space to take, well, your loved ones with you or a few friends. Not that much cargo space. I mean, really, board shorts and bikinis. How much space can they take? But this, this car is for people with those that have more active lifestyles. So a crossover like the MG ZS would definitely be something to look at. Now, if you're a family person like myself, we're not very big people, but we do appreciate space when we have it. And that's exactly what MPVs can give you, a lot of space. It gives you the ability to carry almost everything that you love inside in one go. So the likes of the XL7 might be for you. More than anything, really, this is a show of force that manufacturers do understand 
that a million Philippine pesos means a million things to more than a million of us. And to our viewers out there, it's a glimpse of what is available out there for them. Be it two people, four people, family of seven, inside the city, outside the city with a bit of rough road. Point is that there is a car with your needs written all over it. And there's a better than good chance that you'll find what you're looking for on autodeal.com.ph.